Hi, so if you're currently still running Windows 10, you probably noticed last week that the official support has ended on October 14th. So if you are also in that situation, like I am, what do you do? Should you upgrade your Windows 10 system to Windows 11? It's free by the way. Or should you maybe still stay on Windows 10 for a while because you need your system to finish work? Or maybe you are thinking about setting up a new Windows 11 system so that you have two systems in parallel, one on Windows 10 that you can use to keep working and gradually setting up a Windows 11 system to replace your Windows 10 system. So let's look at the options and let's go. So I built and assembled this doll PC over here in 2021, four years ago with Windows 10 and it has really worked like a charm for those four years. So I knew Windows 11 was coming but I had work to do for my band, we just released a new single and of course I also needed to make videos for this YouTube channel, both for running Cubase as well as for video editing. However if I look at my Windows update settings now, you can see over here that it says your version of Windows has reached the end of support. You can still check for updates and actually I noticed yesterday that it was still downloading updates even though the 14th October has passed but that could also be because I was behind a little bit and below that you can see that they're offering to download and install Windows 11 version 25 H2 at the moment. When you're ready for the update please select download and install. So if you're in the same situation your Windows update probably looks very similar to mine unless you have a system which is not compatible with Windows 11 but more about that later but as you can see Microsoft would really like you to upgrade to Windows 11 to stay on the supported version and then you're set up for for years to come again. But what are the options exactly now? Well option one is of course do nothing. Your installation of Windows 10 will not suddenly stop working so you can just choose to not upgrade. If you go this way though then it's probably wise to make sure that it does not automatically update you which it almost did already a couple of times for me but over here in the advanced options of Windows update you can basically pause any updates until 35 days from now for example I could set it to the 24th of November. Now at that time I would have to pay attention again that it does not automatically update but then at least you're set for a little while again. Now there are a couple of disadvantages to that of course. One is you're not getting any security updates anymore from Microsoft. This means that if a hacker finds some way to break into Windows 10, what they used to do is that they would release a security update to fix that issue. But that's no longer happening for this Windows 10 installation. So I would say that if you do want to keep running Windows 10 for a longer time, the safest way is to fully disconnect it from the internet and to just work offline all the time. Which is a major hassle of course if you sometimes want to update your software or download new software. That's just not happening from a system that's offline. Now another big disadvantage of staying on Windows 10 is also that gradually more and more new versions of software that you use, for example Cubase or certain plugins, or maybe drivers for your hardware or audio interface will no longer support Windows 10. Even before the 14th October, my Stream Deck software already complained that I was installing an update which was not officially supported on Windows 10 anymore. It is still working and I expect that that will happen more and more. Now to counter at least one of those disadvantages, the lack of security updates, there's actually another option as well is that you can roll in the extended security updates program of Microsoft and that allows you to stay on Windows 10 and still get security updates for any security issues that they may still find in Windows 10. So at least you will be able to keep your system connected to the internet and be safe. So let's have a look how that works. Because on the right side of Windows Update here you can see that there's an option to enroll in the extended security updates to help keep your device secure and there's an enroll now button. Now I have to say that this option was not initially available for me when I tried this yesterday but there are some workarounds to make sure that this option is still presented to you and I use the option here in this Reddit link. But there are lots of manual commands that you need to run here which at least helped me to get this option in my Windows update. So I'll leave a link in the description. I will also link two videos which go into far greater detail about how to apply this fix to make sure that you can enroll in this program. So if you feel insecure about following the instructions in this link, check out those videos. But once you have those options, you can just click enroll now. So it explains here about the fact that you will still get security updates with this enrollment. But you do need to be signed in uh, to your Microsoft account to get this. Fortunately I am, so let's continue. So as you can see I'm eligible to enroll in the extended security updates at no extra cost. So let's click enroll. So now I'm enrolled in the extended security updates for the next year for free.
As you can see in my Windows update, it no longer gives the warning that I'm running an unsupported operating system. I can check for updates again. There's a green mark saying that I am currently up to date already. And of course, you can also still upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Now, the next option which you can do is, of course, upgrade your system to Windows 11. Long term, this is, of course, the best solution, probably the only solution if you want to stay on Windows, because it will also get you security updates again on the new operating system, which you can probably still keep running for years and years to come. Now, I have not done that yet myself, as you just saw, because I first wanted to see the impact of that on another system I have, which was running Windows 10, which is basically an old laptop, which is also running my video editor and Cubase. So I basically wanted to test whether all my installed programs and all the settings were retained when upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11. And I have to say, so far, so good on that test. Everything is basically still working as before. There are some differences, of course, but my main programs are still there. They retain their settings and they still work. So I will probably also do a Windows 11 update on this system in the not too distant future. Might make another video about it to let you know how it went and if there's anything worthwhile to discuss. Now, I already did some research in how to tune a door PC for Windows 11. So for those of you who have already upgraded to Windows 11 but haven't tuned your system yet, I can really recommend two links that you should check out. And one is this thread on Gearspace, which contains four pages with all kinds of suggestions for how you can tune Windows 11 for use as a door system. But of course, you do have to go through multiple messages and condense your own selection of what you want to tune exactly. So there's another option, which is a great video by this channel over here, Ask DRTK, how to set up a Windows 11 PC for music production with a door, your best audio PC ever. It's quite a long video, 34 minutes, but he really goes into a lot of details on how you can tune your Windows 11 system for use as a door PC. And that starts with turning off a lot of visual effects which you don't need and might cost you some performance to actually allocating certain processes to certain processor cores using some of the Windows tools, but also using some of the freely other available tools. So it's really detailed. Some of his advice, I think, is very specific for his system. So for this video as well, I think you should choose how far you want to go on your system. But in general, he seems to be very knowledgeable about this. He also offers consultancy calls if you want to do this for your specific system. But the video contains all great advice and you can really go very far and very deep tuning your system for getting real-time audio performance on Windows 11. Now, before I start talking about more options and specifically also what to do if you have unsupported hardware, which does not allow you to upgrade to Windows 11, if you like this video or find it useful at all, please give it a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm so that it gets shown to more people. Subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon so you know when I publish another video. For even more support, you can use the super thanks button below the video somewhere in this corner. Or if you're planning to buy anything at one of these stores, I have many affiliate links in the description. And if you click one of those links before you make a purchase, I get a small commission on whatever you buy at that store without any additional cost to you, which is highly appreciated. But let's get back to Windows 11. Now, in the beginning, I mentioned that your Windows update screen may not have looked like mine, where it offered you to upgrade to Windows 11. And that's if your current system does not support an upgrade to Windows 11. You can check that by running the PC Health Check app, which I'll leave a link in the description to. And that app tells you exactly why you cannot upgrade to Windows 11. It may be that the processor on your system is too old, or it may be that your board does not support TPM2, which was actually the case for my laptop. However, I also mentioned already that I did upgrade my laptop to Windows 11 as a sort of test before upgrading my main door. So it is possible with a bit of a workaround. And again, I'll refer you to another video to go into the details about this because there are a lot of details to know. So I will not go through that now, but this channel tips to fix. And there are actually a lot of channels who talk about this, but this one basically refers you to a tool that you can use. You can download it, it's open source. And then with this tool, you get a user interface, which allows you to download the Windows 11 image, install it on your PC, even though your PC is officially not Windows 11 compatible. And it did go pretty smoothly. The only thing is that initially I downloaded the wrong Windows 11 image. I downloaded English International, for example, and my laptop actually contained a Dutch version, which I had set to the English language. So I thought it was the English version, but initially a Dutch version was installed on that laptop. And then you can still upgrade to Windows 11, but it doesn't offer you the possibility to keep your installed programs and settings. 
So I then had to re-download the Dutch Windows 11 image, but it did not allow me to do that. I think it's probably locked on IP address or something, maybe because they don't want you to download all Windows 11 images very shortly, one after the other. But after I managed to download the Dutch image, the upgrade actually went pretty smoothly. If you're in the same situation, give it a try, and you might be running Windows 11, even though your hardware does not officially support it, which might add a couple of years to the life of your older system again, of course while still being supplied with security updates. Now another option is of course to not upgrade your Windows 10 system to Windows 11, but just build a completely new system with Windows 11 in parallel to having your Windows 10 system to keep working. And even though my current system is only four years old and is still quite capable, in the not too distant future, I will probably also start building a new system with a new version of Windows 11 on there. See how that goes and then probably document it again in one or more videos like I did last time. Now, another option which you have, of course, if you're still on Windows 10 at this moment, is get a new system with no windows at all. And that's probably what you Mac people have been waiting for all along during this video. Why not just go Mac? It has been a very popular option with a lot of music producers in the last years, basically since introducing the M1, M2, M3, M4 chips, which seem to work great for music production as well as video editing. So that's very much also an option, of course. Now, I do have some more thoughts about this and why it might not be the option that I would go for in my situation with all the hardware that I have. But maybe that's another video and I don't really want to start the Mac versus PC war in this video yet. Maybe on the next one. So let me know how you have been dealing with the Windows 11 upgrade. Have you upgraded already? Did you run into problems? Do you have any tips for us people who still need to upgrade that door? Put them in the comments. Very much appreciate it. Now, like I mentioned, this PC I actually built and assembled myself and building a PC is quite an endeavor. And I actually made three videos about that whole process. Now, parts of those videos are no longer relevant, of course. For example, the processor that I selected four years ago. But all the principles of how to select hardware, how to move your Cubase installation from one system to another with all the settings, those tips still apply. So I will definitely watch those videos again before I build myself another Windows 11 system. And I think some of those tips even apply when you're moving to a Mac, for example. So I will link that series of videos over here. Check it out, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.